Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our virtual Bible study. I want to encourage you, if you will, to go ahead and hit that little share button and let's get the Word of God out tonight and touch as many people as we possibly can. I realize that we're living in a busy world where people just don't have time to sit down and watch an entire study that might go for 45 or even uh, 60 minutes. And this is why I do my very best to keep it within 30 minutes, if at all possible. Last week, Sister Moats and I were at the International General Assembly of the Church of God, and I appreciate so very much uh, Sister Robin Mulkey filling in. And I want to say that I appreciate also uh, Brother Ted Edwards, who's here almost every Wednesday to help make this happen. If he's not here, he has those that he depends upon, such as Josh Parker or, or Christian. And we appreciate so very much everyone's willingness to be a teammate. And that is exactly what this lesson is about tonight, teaming up with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we love you, Lord, and I'm grateful to you for everyone that has taken their time out of a busy Wednesday, Lord, to come and that we might be able to study the Word of God together. Lord, help me tonight to digress, Lord, when I'm tempted to move forward so fast because we are in a race for our life, and we are already pronounced winners if we would dare to run to win. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our study text is taken from where I have taken it for the past two Wednesdays where I've been teaching on the subject, Run to Win. And I want us to understand that we are all winners if we stay in the race and lay aside the weight that so easily besets us, looking unto Jesus, the author, and watch this, the finisher of our faith. We're going to make it if we'll just stay in the race. Our study text has been taken from 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and the 24th verse. And it reads like this. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. Run that you may win the prize. Run with that goal of finishing as the Apostle Paul declared to the young preacher Timothy. He said, I have finished my race. Oh, hallelujah. Beloved, there's coming a day and a time, if the Lord tarries in his coming, that we will close our eyes this side of heaven. And I pray that we will have the assurance that we have finished the race with faith. Faith in God, looking unto Jesus, the one who saved us, cleansed us, washed away our sins, the one who has written our names down in the Lamb's book of life, and the one who declares, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we see in our present study of running to win that we have looked very closely at a strategy to win. You see, you've got to have a strategy because the enemy is playing for keeps. He wants to keep you longer than you want to stay. He wants you to spend more than you ever thought of spending. And he wants to take you further than you ever thought of him taking you. This is why we can't play in this day and time when there is such an antichrist spirit abounding on planet earth. It's not just in the United States. It's, it's certainly not just here in Georgia, but the antichrist spirit is attacking the entire planet. 
antichrist, meaning not the Word, not Christ, not God, anything that is godly and holy in Christ Jesus, uh, there is an antichrist spirit that is trying to combat it. But I'm here to tell you that when we look at this repeating thought of this strategy of running to win, there is a key word that we have been mentioning in each of these studies, and it is simply obedient. Obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ, where we would declare, Father, I will be obedient to you. I pledge my heart, I pledge my all unto you that I may run to win in this Christian race. You see, beloved, when we stop and think about being obedient, what we're simply doing is saying yes to God. When you take this word yes and break it down, you take the why, and we've already alluded to this in previous studies, so I'm not going to stay with the first two letters. I'm just going to hit them for review. But we take the why and that why and obedience setting our strategy in this Christian race that we may run to win, run to obtain the prize, is that we yield 100% to God. Hear me. To give God our mind, to give God our very heart, our very soul, to give God our physical body. The scripture declares what? Know ye not that you are the property of God? You are not your own. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which belongs to the Lord. We see this as the Apostle Paul declared the writings to the church at Corinth. You see, beloved, we're living in a day and time that there's lust, there's degrading passions, there's everything that this physical body has an appetite for. And and not all of these things are godly or wholesome and certainly not in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we have to be careful that we lay aside the weight and the sin which would so easily beset us and hinder us in our run for the prize. Therefore, we stay committed to God and we stay committed to Him 100%. We do this by looking at the second letter again. We we have already spent time in this in depth, but yield to God. You see, as we yield ourselves unto the Lord 100%, the second letter is E. We must endure, oh hallelujah, the hardness as a good soldier. Paul writing to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 and 3. He simply put it like this. You therefore... Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, running to win. Now, this brings us to our lesson for tonight because we, we want to take this last letter of the word yes and look at our obedience, the strategy of running to win, and more than just yielding, more than just enduring, but how about serving? You see, God did not save us that we would just sit on a pew. No, beloved. God did not credential a lot of us just so we can say that we have a parchment or we have a paper to preach the gospel. We all are lay ministers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout the New Testament, the Lord declares, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. It's interesting to me how many people in this day and time thinks that it's all about them. It's all about the, the number one in, under, in other words, but I said in the opening statement that I'm thankful for, to the Lord for the team that we have here at the Armerchi Church of God because, beloved, I certainly can't do it. And the longer I'm in ministry, how much I truly realize that. I've got to have those around me to help me, to be my arms, to be my legs, to be my hands, to be my feet, to be my eyes, and to be my ears. It 
takes teamwork. And the Lord Jesus, oh, beloved, hear me. For him to do the work, the Lord God gave him a strategy to take 12 men and turn this world right side up with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. People think that it's all about numbers, and I differ with that. I don't believe that. I think it's about teamwork because if you have a true team that is obedient to God in yielding themselves to God in enduring for God and understanding that we're serving one another and as we serve each other we're all serving together with the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. 2 Corinthians the 6th chapter and verse 1. We then, as workers together with him, we then, as workers together with him, there is no personal pronoun I in the word team. For there are those who may be willing, if you will, to yield themselves to God and even to endure for Him, but yet they fail to be cooperative with God. You see, beloved, we can't afford to be stubborn when it comes to the Word of God. We can't afford to take the Word of God and rip out what doesn't fit our culture. Let me tell you something. The Word of God is to invade the culture and for the word of God to invade the culture we must be enveloped we must be clothed in the word of God this is why we take the word and we partake of the word and we read the word we pray the word and the word becomes part of us and when we're out in the highways and hedges such as the restaurants the malls and on vacation and even in the house of God on Sundays the un believer will see the work that we do but watch this they will glorify our father which is in heaven so therefore we have to do all that we can to serve God understanding we need each other amen why don't you just take time right now and say dear Lord help me to see that I must have my brother and sister Amen. Dear Lord, help me to see that I must have my brother and my sister. For reasons such as complacency, there's a lack of true concern. While there are others that fail because of inferiority feelings or the lack of confidence or the lack of courage, well, beloved, stop right there. Stop. You see, I believe there's some, there should be some trepidation. In my 46 years of ministering this gospel, I had one young man, matter of fact, I've had several to ask me, Brother Moats, do you ever not have sweaty palms or sweaty hands? Do you, do you ever not have a, a, a lack of, God, do I really have your word? Do I really have the message for, for this meeting, for this service, for, for this class? Uh, do you have, or do you, is there, and I said, no, no, there should be a reverence of understanding that we're mere clay. Amen. We have not arrived. Paul said, I have not yet apprehended. So therefore, there should, certainly should be some trepidation in our, in our confidence within ourselves. But now watch this. When we are clothed in the Spirit of God and we have bathed our heart in the Word of God, and we have laid prostrate before God in prayer, we realize that greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Therefore, we get up as a strong soldier of the Lord. We're yielded 100% to God. We're enduring the hardness as a good soldier, and we are serving one another, and together we are co laborers with the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. And when we get to the point of feeling uh, that inferiority to the point that we say, oh my, I can't do this. Well, that's not even scriptural. The scripture declares, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, I remember, even though it's been many, many, many years ago, when I preached my first message, I had 
announce my call to the ministry on a Sunday night. My, 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 how God had blessed. And oh, my, oh, my, oh, hallelujah. When I think about that service, how God had blessed. And I received that call, and I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I, I will preach this gospel. When I announced it that night, the pastor came up to me, and he said, I want you to preach in two weeks. I thought, wow, I, I can't. And then all of a sudden, the Spirit of God quickened me in my mortal body and said, if I've called you, I will anoint you. You see, beloved, it's the anointing that makes the difference. It's the anointing that comes upon us when we are yielded, when we're enduring, and when we're serving together as a teammate with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord declared in Luke 4, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. God said that in the last days he would pour out his Spirit upon all flesh. Not that we would just give a message in tongues and have an interpretation interpretation, but that we might proclaim this gospel message and do the works of God Almighty. He told us to go ye therefore into this world and make disciples. And beloved, the only way we can do this is under the unction and the anointing of the very Spirit of the living God. I prayed, I sought the Lord, I studied, and I prayed, and I sought the Lord, and I studied. All of my little notes was on a little old bitty piece of paper, and it was all scribbled together. And, and, and I, I preached that night from Matthew, Come unto me, all ye that are burdened and are heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. Take my yoke upon you, and oh, and you learn of me, and you shall find that I am meek and I am lowly in heart. And oh, all I can remember truly, all I can remember is when I took my text and read it, and it was just like such a heavy anointing fell upon me. I preached for exactly, they told me, 50. Minutes and I thought, my, my, what just happened? Because there was such an anointing upon me until I, I, I was almost like I was like the apostle. I was between heaven and earth. I felt suspended from my body, but yet I wasn't in a heaven. And my such an anointing, I declare unto you tonight that this is what the people need in this hour. This is what our children. This is what our young people. This is what our young couples. Uh, this is what our moms and dads, and yes, our seniors are crying for. They're sick and tired of this sensationalism. They're sick and tired of people trying to, to be somebody else that they're not. Honey, be who you are. Hallelujah. And run to win and allow the Spirit of God to rest upon you, understanding that we are workers together with the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. In order to win in this Christian race, we must trust God for any and all of our concerns. And we must take courage, understanding we are never alone. I remember when I left a very strong, very strong church in the previous state that we ministered in. It was in South Carolina, my home state. <clears throat> and God had led us to a church that was grossly in debt in the, here in North Georgia, in the Atlanta area. They had a big welcome committee for us. They had a big to-do and, and on that Sunday evening, a big meal that was greatly appreciated. And, and I knew the challenge that was before us. And one of the council members took it upon himself to think that I wasn't informed. And so he wanted to come and tell me how bad and how there was such a big hole in our finances. So he pulled me away from that welcome. He pulled me away from good fellowship. And I said, yes, sir. He said, I need to tell you, we don't have one red cent. I sat down in the secretary's chair and 
I just sort of leaned back, and I just started rocking. And I burst out, and I just started laughing. And it somewhat got away with him. He said, what, what are you? You're sitting here laughing. And I said, well, you want me to cry in despair or believe that we've got a God big enough? And the Word declares that we look unto Jesus who is more than enough. The Word of God declares, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches by Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And then it touched him. And he began to stop and he began to think. He said, well, and I said, wait a minute. I said, we are never broke in the ministry of the Lord. I said, when we look unto Jesus, we're never disappointed. When we cry and lift our voice to God, we're never disappointed. When we hold our hands up and say, Dear Lord, fill my cup, Lord, that I've lifted up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I won't no more. Let me tell you, you're never disappointed. We stayed there for a number of years, and when we walked away, it was a strong church, and I thank God for how he blessed and how he touched and how he moved there in the Shamley Dunwoody area there in Atlanta. I'm here to tell you tonight, Night, beloved, we are never alone. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and God puts us together with brothers and sisters of varied backgrounds and varied interests, but we come together as one to do the work of ministry. This is why he sets up everything. If we would be obedient, get back to our word, get back to our common denominator in running to win and be obedient. You see, beloved, too many people's wanting to go anti-word. Too many people's wanting to quench the spirit. Too many people think they know best. But when we think that we know best, God will say, okay, you go ahead and tell me how that does for you. So therefore, we are workers together with him. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. He says in Psalms 127 and the A part of verse 1. Watch this. Unless the Lord builds the house, we that labor, labor in vain. There it is. If God calls you, he's going to anoint you. God has saved you. God has redeemed you. God has given you a purpose, and that purpose is to take your family to heaven if at all possible. The purpose is to reach out to your neighbor and to love your neighbor. The purpose is to make a difference on the job where you work, whether you like it or don't. The purpose is to go to bed every night with your faith and trust in the Lord that he's going to bless you with a good night's rest, that he's got it well in hand. And when you are allowed to see the day, in other words, unless the rapture of the church or the Lord takes you through the night, he's given us another opportunity to do the work of ministry together. Never feel that you're alone. When I was studying this, the Lord gave me took me back, if you will, to John 21. Around verse 6 there, they had toiled all night long, seasoned fishermen, men that knew the waters, men who had the crust of the sea salt in their beard, men who were well known on the coast. They had toiled all night long and they were together minus one you say what do you mean you'll get it just listen Jesus goes to them (laughs) and in verse 6 of John 21 Jesus told them cast your net on the right side of the boat now, you see, this net is not just a mesh. It's, it's, it's knitted together at all four corners, this corner to this corner, this corner to this corner. He said, but you've told on the wrong side. 
Now just be obedient. Here's the word. Cast your net on the right side. Now they could have been obstinate and said, but Lord, we've already tried that. How many times, and we're, we're approaching a new church year. Now, I know the fiscal year runs from January to January, but a church year runs from, Janu- from September to September, and I'm excited. We'll be, you you want to come be part of us in this new church year for sure because we're kicking off some things that I'm going to be sharing throughout the month of August. But they took their nets without being obstinate because they were committed They had laid down to follow Christ. They were enduring. They had toiled all night long. They weren't giving up. They they had toiled all night long. And then when Jesus said, cast it, they showed that they had the cooperative attitude to be a team player. It, It never ceases to amaze me in this day and time. The Lord can try to come into a service, try to get into our own personal heart and our mind and our very spirit, and and we start questioning him. You know, just be obedient. I mean, my, my word, he's God. They didn't question him. Read it. They didn't say, but. They didn't say, we have. They, no, they said, okay. <laughs> they cast their net on the right side. And as they cast their net on the right side, they had such a feel of fish in their net. Now, get this. Read it. Read it tonight before you go to bed. They had to call for the others, see, serving together. They had to call for the others that were in their boats, in their ships, if you will, to draw the net in for such a haul of fish. Now, beloved, when we understand that there's no red, there's no white, there's no yellow, there's no whatever, and we understand that there's no uh, this denomination or this spiritual tribe, if you will, but we're covered by the blood. We're brothers and sisters in the name of the Lord. It never ceases to amaze me. I can go to the hospital, get on the elevator, and somebody from another uh, faith will get on with me, and, and I can look at them and say, hello, how are you today? And they just sort of stare at me. No, it should not be there. If we are brothers and sisters, there is the blood of Christ that has been applied. And we're all trying to make a difference. Uh, What we need to do is get our eyes clear. And our eyes are cleared through the power of the Holy Spirit when we read the Word of God that washes away all that needs to be washed away. The pride of life, the carnality of life, the lust of life, uh, the love love for money, and then we'll start seeing souls, amen, we'll start seeing moms and dads and children that have got to be reached before the coming of the Lord. The only way we can do it is just like the Lord taught them in John 21, we're workers together, we're workers together, we're workers together with him, the key word being obedient. So therefore, We go back to our study text of 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. Everybody's running. But one receiveth the prize. Therefore, run that you may obtain. Run that you may be the winner. Amen. We need to be cheering one another on. Everybody's different. Hey, if you were here this past Sunday, Brother Lee Smoller ministered the word. I thank God every day for Lee and Marie and, and Lindsay and, and their family. But he, he, he has a different delivery from me. But guess what? He preached the word. It went forth. It touched lives. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch Sunday morning. It will bless your heart. You say, but Pastor Motes, that that wasn't you. It don't have to be me is what I'm saying. It can be another brother. It can be another sister. It don't have to be you, beloved. We are workers together. See, again, as I conclude this message, there is no I in team. So when we stop and think about this, We will win, and we will win strong when we yield to God, when we endure for God, and when we serve with God through the power 
of the Holy Spirit. Can we pray? Father, oh my, how time has so swiftly passed in this study tonight. I pray that this word has fallen on good ground. Lord, I pray tonight that people will understand that in these latter days, that our latter days will be greater than our former days because God is doing a work in the land, and I want to be part of it. But I realize that I can't do the work that God's called me to do by myself. And, Lord, I'm so thankful that at this season of my life that you've given me a helpmate, a wonderful family, and a wonderful church family, and a community that is ready for harvest, that we can go out into the highways and hedges together and make a difference in Jesus' name. God bless every listener tonight, and may this word find a lodging place and grow through the watering of the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Amen. If I may, Lord willing, we'll be staying in this same vein of running to win, but we're going to be running to win looking at three, three different aspects. The outset, the outlook, and the outcome. Be sure to join us. Once again, hit that share button. Let's get the Word of God out. You say, well, I want to come be with you. Where are you guys located? We're right here on Highway 27 North, just about three and a half miles from the mall here in Rome. So come be with us. We would love to have you. Our address is Post Office Box 307 or Murchie, Georgia, 30105. We love you. We're praying for you. Looking forward to seeing you hopefully this Sunday at 11 o'clock. God bless.